All right, next up, we have Michael Marshall from Stantec. Awesome, thank you. Uh, so my name is Michael Marshall, I'm with Stantec, and I'm gonna talk to you guys today about uh, how we're implementing drones in Nevada uh, and how it works into our workflow for bridge inspection. Uh, so the agenda today, I'm just gonna talk about uh, use cases and flight planning, um, how we get to mobilize for these missions and, and what is an acceptable use of this. Uh, the pilot considerations, of course, uh, and then how we're using this in the field uh, with video con uh, inspection and also uh, still images, uh, but also 3D modeling and how we're uh, putting that in inspections. Uh, and then you'll see a product example littered throughout this entire uh, presentation, but then we're gonna get into that one in detail. So at Stantec, we have a great pride in our safety. Uh, so we try to start every presentation out with a safety moment. So mine here today is, uh, you can apply this to your daily lives. Uh, know your surroundings. In this case, uh, for drone inspection, um, we had a climber out there with ropes hanging below them. Uh, so not only do I need to watch out for the objects that might be not visible from a long distance, but also those objects are moving throughout the inspection day. Uh, so always knowing where those folks are and uh, wh wh how that rope is being taught and on um, keeping them up. All right, so how are we mobilizing for these uh, inspections? Uh, the first thing that I always look for is airspace considerations. Uh, and you can kind of see a map to the back side of that, which we'll get into, but uh, is plotting that on the map and understanding where are, the, uh, where are we restricted from flying and where can we uh, also see some obstacles because uh, of other airports. Uh, but also, how are we, uh, bridges might be also an obstacle. Um, so that's the second topic I want to get into after that. Um, and then also bridge geometry and where's the best use of these uh, drones, the environment around the structure, uh, what UAV and what technology we need to use after we've gone through this, and uh, everything ties into the scope of work. Uh, so for, th for those of you who aren't drone pilots, uh, this isn't your traditional Google Maps. Uh, this is actually the first map we go to and, and try to plot where the bridge is. Uh, so you can see this is actually Denver International Airport, kind of centered. The yellow is actually City and County of Denver. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is as we get closer and closer to those uh, center, circles of center, uh, the center of the circles, uh, we have restricted airspace and have to get permits. As we get further out, we actually get into Class G airspace, uh, but also we can get auto approvals uh, if we're lucky enough. The other thing to take away is there's also other airports. Even though we don't fly in and out of them as consumers, uh, there's Broomfield Airport. You can kind of see that up to the uh, northwest. We have Centennial Airport to the south and also Buckley Air Force Base. Uh, so that's one question I get a lot is we're not near an airport. Uh, but you might also be. Uh, the other thing to take away from this map that's really hard to see, but there's uh, other airports surrounding this city that aren't taking into account airspace. Uh, so those are your typical uh, city and county um, airports that might not be manned. They just take, planes take off maybe every hour from those locations. And we need to understand where they are and, and how we can communicate with that uh, when we're flying. So once we've established our airspaces in a good shape, uh, we can look at our bridge. Uh, and this example is actually from uh, Washington, just north of Seattle, uh, but a pipeline bridge with a lot of suspension cables. Uh, very easy to get entangled with that and understanding where are limitations, where can I put the drone uh, without getting entangled with one of those cords, uh, where can I see the different uh, structural details, and uh, if there's any hanging objects also coming from those uh, objects. So we've also seen chains being hung from certain details uh, and knowing where those are at. Uh, not really necessarily uh, bridge detail, but uh, bird nesting can also be a problem. Uh, so understanding if we have a bridge like that, birds tend to uh, cause us issues with drone flying, uh, especially in large numbers. Uh, next is uh, bridge type and geometry considerations. So in this case, uh, structural details and clearance. So uh, with this bridge, it's hard enough sometimes to get your head up in between the girders. So what kind of drone am I going to need to get up in between the bays and look down at welds? or am I content with just looking at it from the soffit? Uh, girder spacing, uh, what type of material is it? Are we looking at concrete, which are, the defects are readily able to see? Or are we looking at steel where things can be more microscopic and require NDT work? Keep zooming out, uh, environmental settings, you can see here um, it's raining. Uh, that's a question I get a lot. Um, rain is, most of our drones are not waterproof, there are some. Uh, live traffic is another consideration, we're dealing with bridges. Uh, so traffic will always be an issue and how are we gonna mitigate that? Pedestrian traffic, and you'll actually see an onlooker uh, uh, consideration with one of our projects. Power lines, very common around bridges, and of course vegetation, which can also be changing. So now we've established uh, you know, what types of considerations do we have for our bridge? Uh, now what type of technology are we gonna need? So I prefer um, a, our Skydio drone, which is the X2 shown there, with obstacle avoidance, uh, meaning 
we can take that, run it into the bridge, and it won't actually hit the bridge. Uh, it understands its surroundings without GPS, and I know there was an example actually on a previous presentation with a two plus. But also, what types of payload do we need? Uh, do we need thermal? Do we need video? Do we need LiDAR? What type of uh, on, uh, basically onboard cameras are we gonna need for this project? The drone size and limitations. Uh, so you'll see in the project, we were content with the X2, which has a much larger wingspan. But again, if you're trying to get up in between girders, uh, it might be looking at a smaller wingspan, maybe something that's more uh, suited for a confined space. And lastly, uh, the tough one is deliverable and output. Uh, not all of our clients actually have 3D modeling software. How are we gonna deliver that to the client uh, and make sure that they can keep that? Last thing is, uh, this is our crew from the Ocala and Tillman project, but uh, what type of pilots am I gonna need? Uh, as we all know, FAA Part 107 licensed drone pilots are required, so we need one of those for every uh, drone that's in the air. Uh, a basic versus advanced, we use this internally. Uh, it's also used up in Canada for their licensing program, but uh, essentially what types of maneuvers are we gonna be doing on the bridge with a drone? And do I need someone who's more advanced and uh, understanding of, of drones versus a basic pilot? Uh, time on the drone. Uh, we, can de we can be an advanced pilot, someone who has extensive experience, uh, but it's also important to understand that pilot needs to understand the drone before they go to fly it. Um, so uh, definitely want to have time on the sticks and put it up in the air uh, before you actually take it to a bridge site. Visual observer, what I mean by that is uh, it's always important to have somebody on site that's watching the pilot and watching the surroundings of the drone. The pilot's typically uh, worried about the inspection that they're doing uh, and where the drone's going, but it's important to have the uh, visual observer. And other certifications, uh, especially in the world of bridge inspection, we want to make sure our bridge inspector is a team leader and, and certified. All right, so now let's get down to how we're uh, using this. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're just going to talk about how we use this as a tool for videos and, and photos. Uh, so in this case, we have a, a bridge that's south of Las Vegas, uh, and it has a heavy super elevation. So we're able to put on the left side of that photo a snooper truck and be able to snoop underneath the structure, but we're not able to get to the other side. And then when we switch to the other side, the ele super elevation is so heavy uh, that we're already at our tipping point and unable to deploy. So what are our options here? Uh, snooper truck was out. There is no roadway underneath for a bucket truck. Uh, climbing team is definitely uh, valid here, but takes a lot of time and effort for a relatively new structure. Let's see if this plays. Yep. Uh, so the way we went about this is uh, to take a drone and one go underneath and between the girders, and also this you're seeing on the outside of the girder. Uh, so this is essentially a bridge inspector able to see the inspection uh, live on his controller, uh, and also take this video back as, as a reference tool. But the flight in total, I would say, with all of the bays that we uh, flew, including the exterior, probably about, I would say, 20 minutes of total flight time, as opposed to maybe a climbing team that would take half of a day. Another example of this, uh, Galena Creek Bridge between Carson City and Reno. Uh, we snooped this structure from the outside, but as you can see with that arch, uh, we're unable to get that snooper truck low enough to be able to see the bottom side of the arch. So again, we could possibly look at a rope access team uh, but instead, deploying a, a drone with a bridge inspector at the controls, uh, they're able to see this as if they were in a snooper uh, going all the way down the entirety of the arch. And another advantage here to using a bridge inspector on the controls, we're able to actually see these defects live in the field. We're able to get closer up within three feet, uh, take pictures, and how to and integrate that with the report. Uh, so if we find something back in the uh, office, especially with this video, we're able to take stills out and quickly integrate the report. And while this is running, uh, the one drawback, I guess, from video and photo stills, as you can see, we don't have a scale. We don't have a reference of how big the defects are if we find them. Um, and it's also tough to see the surroundings. You're limited to whatever the pilot uh, videotaped while they're out there. So my next couple slides are gonna go over how we've now implemented 3D modeling. And I would say the drawback before we get into it is, is the post-processing time. Uh, so when you're trying to determine, do I need video or do I need 3D modeling? You know, what are you actually looking for in the scope of work? Uh, but within 3D models, uh, we have full bridge models versus component models. Uh, and I'll get into that, how I interpret that in a minute. Uh, the standoff distance and detail, how close do you need to be your object in order to get the detail you need for an inspection? 
are we going to need AI detection? So uh, that goes back to your detail. So if you're wanting AI crack detection or something like that that's coming out, uh, you're going to need to make sure your standoff distance uh, gets that extra detail. And how are we going to deliver this to our client? Uh, because quite frankly, most clients don't have the 3D modeling software, the ability to, to see this on the back end. How will we deliver that to them? And so this is what I'm talking about with uh, component modeling versus uh, maybe a total bridge model. Uh, so the top left is a model from O'Callaghan and Tillman's approach peers. So that's just one peer with uh, two columns. Uh, I would say that total processing time was about an hour and a half or so. Uh, columns are about 150 foot high in that picture. Whereas the bottom right is a conglomerate of all of those columns, right? And that took about 24 hours uh, in total to, to stitch back together. So first I'll, I'll show a component model. So this is very similar to O'Callaghan and Tillman. Uh, this is a drone, uh, our Skydio X2 running a 3D scan operation on just a, a simple column that's 150 foot tall. So here uh, we made the determination you can't use a bucket truck, we can't use our snooper truck. Uh, we didn't deploy a climbing team. Instead, uh, you can see the drone going back and forth. Uh, let's see if I can reset it too. Um, essentially taking photos at every time it stops. Uh, it's taking advantage of object avoidance and also doing an autonomous flight. Uh, so essentially the pilot is watching the, the structure here and making sure the drone doesn't get into any trouble. And so what came out of that is a 3D model of just the column itself. Uh, so the processing time here was about an hour. Uh, the flight time that you saw before was about 30 minutes. So in total of an hour and 30 minutes, we're able to then zoom in uh, and get rather close detail of cracks, spalls, uh, or any other defects. And so one thing to take away here is with an hour and a half, I mean, 30 minutes of flight time and, and an hour of post-processing time, uh, you're actually able, if you have a standalone machine there in the field, you're able to process this directly during the inspection. And if there's issues that you see, you can maybe deploy a climbing team or um, other means of inspection. So stand-up distance and detail, it kind of goes along with uh, what you just saw there, but uh, you need to make sure you understand how far away does that drone need to be and what, what type of camera am I using in order to get the detail I need to see the inspect. Uh, see the defects. So here you're seeing uh, an Ocala and Tillman column. And if we zoom in, we're hoping to see that enough detail to find cracks, uh, what width of cracks, and make measurements, um, be able to take measurements right there in the field. Another thing I like to note here, uh, you know, as opposed to other types of drones, uh, the reason why we chose Skydio with a lot of these uh, projects you can see there's a cliff wall there. Uh, so the Skydio drone is actually able to autonomously fly in and around that column without hitting that rock wall. So most drone pilots would not advise flying in those areas. Very easy to get a sudden gust of wind and hit into that column, uh, and you've lost a drone for the day. So again, yeah, we're able to see that detail on the backside uh, for the inspection. Okay, so all that brings to us to a project example. So uh, this was O'Callaghan Tillman Bridge, uh, Michael Callan Pat Tillman Bridge uh, at Hoover Dam. Uh, so the goal here was to integrate uh, the drone team for the approach columns into the rope access team. So this is kind of everything all into one, a drone team, a snooper team, and a rope access team. And the objective of the drone team was to inspect the approach columns and maybe make sure that, or try to make that so we don't have to climb those exterior columns uh, if we don't need to. So going back to our mobilization effort, uh, how do we go through those steps? First off, this was restricted airspace. Uh, it's because we're dealing with the Hoover Dam. You can't just take a drone out and start flying it around a federal historical landmark. Uh, so we need to get permissions for that. Uh, good news here, the uh, bridge obstructions, we really don't have any chains, cords, or any small objects hanging from the bridge. Um, the geometry and details, uh, superstructure is extremely wide space. Uh, same with the substructure units, so we have a ton of flying space to use. Environmental surroundings, uh, traffic, always going to be an issue, uh, but for the most part, we were staying below the roadway. Onlookers was a big one here. Uh, we actually had quite a few people trying to stop within our uh, takeoff and landing zones, so you always need to be aware of that and have your uh, visual observer moving people along. The last thing you want is to have a drone come in and land autonomously with somebody that doesn't know what, what's going on. 
uh, technology needs and scope of work. So what we needed out of this was inspection level data for those approach columns to either do the inspection back in the office or right there in the field. So uh, we opted to go with the Skydio 3D scan here rather than just video inspection. Uh, video inspection has been done on this before, uh, just going up and down the columns with other drones. But uh, what we found there was you're really limited again to just seeing what the drone is looking at rather than the total surroundings. Uh, so again, we use Skydio 3D Scan, which you're going to see on the next slide. And the pilot considerations. Uh, we needed someone who understood the Skydio drone and the, the 3D scanning, obviously time on the sticks, and also uh, a bridge inspector needed to be there on site for the collection of the data. So what you're seeing here is the 3D scan in process. So this is the actual controller of the, of the Skydio 2 X2 instrument. Uh, every red square and the flicker of the screen is actually a picture being taken. Uh, top left, you can see uh, for this specific column, we're looking at 700 photos. So the initial setup that wasn't shown before this, uh, the pilot goes around and determines where the different uh, extents of the project are, where do we want to scan, how low do we want the uh, unit to scan, and how high we want the unit to scan. From that point, it does its uh, observer mode and understands Okay, we're looking at a column, and this is how many pictures I'm going to need in order to put this into a 3D scan. After that point, it, it goes to work. And you're essentially, as the pilot, it's important, again, to have a bridge inspector here uh, to be able to watch these controls and, and see the, essentially do the inspection uh, as it's flying. And you'll notice one thing I didn't really discuss too much is uh, doing extensive flight planning for 3D modeling. A lot of times uh, back in the, uh, in the history, we've, we've had to do extensive mission planning, understanding how many pictures I need to take of a certain area, uh, where do I need to fly to in order to make sure my 3D model is complete. Uh, we actually eliminate that with uh, Skydio 3D Scan because the drone does the flight planning itself while it's flying. Uh, so we're just there to make, uh, observe it and make sure it's staying out of trouble. And again, you can see how it gets closer within three feet of the structure. Would not do that with any other drone. And it's collecting all of our data. Let me see if I can fast forward here. The, so the end result of this is a 3D model. So you saw some of the component models. Uh, this is actually the, the full scan of the approach columns uh, taken from GNEXT. So again, we talk about that deliverable. This is an internet site which we can give passwords to. Uh, you can log in. It's all dependent on how quick your internet connection is rather than what software you have on your computer. Uh, but with this, we're able to zoom in and see the detail. We're able to pan around and see the environment around it, what types of things are surrounding. And we're also able to annotate and take measurements right there on the 3D model itself. So if we find a spall or a specific defect that we're interested in, we can simply draw, get square footage dimensions, areas, uh, what have you, and then export all those defects out. So that's how it can integrate in with your bridge inspection reports. We can take those defects and export them out and plug them right into your uh, commentary. So what you're also seeing is when we click on a certain area, we're also able to zoom in on a specific location. Uh, so you can imagine there's 25 plus photos taken of a very specific point. Uh, so if we're interested in a certain area, we can zoom in uh, on, on the full quality photo. We can also annotate right on the photo itself. And lastly, uh, I kind of spoke about this at, at our booth today with a few folks, but um, you can also implement other surveys. So uh, here you can see where the video is actually being tagged in with some of our photos. Uh, so you can do this with all sorts of surveys and essentially see everything that was taken on site and take that all back to the inspection, inspector himself uh, and be able to do everything back in the office. So this was a simple, I think this was a low res video uh, that we took of a certain location and then panning around a certain pier. So that's uh, kind of the end of my uh, presentation there. I know I only have 20 minutes. Uh, if you actually take your phone out and scan this uh, QR code, uh, we do a LinkedIn Live, we're doing a LinkedIn Live a week from today uh, with Skydio, the manufacturer of the drone you saw in the 3D scanning. Uh, so you can join us for free uh, through LinkedIn and um, yeah, just take your phone out and join us next week. Okay, I think we might have time for maybe one question. Um, if anybody has. So um, if the drone is three feet from the column, what's the resolution and, and 
how how much detail can you get from you know like crack sizes or yeah so um there's a lot that goes into that. I would say it depends on your camera, for one. Uh, so the Skydio has a 12 megapixel camera, which is not the greatest, I would say, in the drone world. But because we're able to get closer, we're able to see more detail. Um, I would say the drawback to saying, let's go three feet and take a photo of everything around it, uh, is you're going to end up with, instead of 700 photos of that pier, you're probably going to end up with thousands of one pier, and the post-processing time is going to be driven up. Um, we're doing a lot of experimenting uh, with um, quality assurance of determining how those AI crack detections work. Uh, but I would say, you know, I wouldn't do your standoff at three feet. Uh, you'll be there all day looking at a single column. Uh, but I would say at 10 feet, we've seen really good results. I've been able to see, you know, 64th inch wide cracking or cracking that's um, outlined in the uh, bridge inspection manual pretty easily. So kind of dependent on bridge, drone, the whole environment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.